So I just wanted to talk about two things which have come up in the uh, exercises we've done so far. One is about the feedback loop um, from a leader and their followers. And the second one is about being triggered as a leader, so emotional triggers. Let's deal with the emotional trigger one first. Uh, when a harmonic leader continually works on themselves, let's just have a quick look and reflect on the three stages of harmonic leadership. First one's purification of self, the second one is unification of team, and the third one's amplification of the impact. Now, you can't amplify your impact without a unified team. It's a, like, it's a lot harder for you as an individual to build momentum to actually amplify your impact. And those of you that are out there trying to conquer, trying to conquer the world, trying to, to launch something large will know this. It's, it can be really, really exhausting. And then when you break through that egoic barrier and realize you don't have to do it yourself, and you can collaborate, and there are people, there are like-minded, beautiful-hearted souls out there that want to unify with you, then what actually happens is you build this momentum, and that allows you to amplify your impact. So one dovetails into the other, but constantly the purification of self remains. It always does. Why? If you look at it linearly, linearly linearly, I should say, as in, in a line, which I understand those who understand concepts of time will realize, yeah, um, we could let that one go. But if we if we just say that everything happens in sequence, then what's going to happen is you'll change in a different place in time. And you'll be in a different space within yourself. So, and you know yourself, sometimes because we move in this spiral through time and space, then what happens is it will sometimes appear that we come back and we're going to be dealing with uh, an issue that we've dealt with before. We're never in the same place, but we might be going to a deeper level of our healing of a certain wound to, to come to even deeper purification of it. So uh, that's why at times we will be faced by circumstance. Now, the, the universe presents these things for us to actually see whether or not we've transcended the actual old story and we can write a new story about it. So the wound may not present anymore as a challenge, it might actually present constantly as an opportunity, and that opportunity you then start to salivate, and you start to really uh, ascend in, in your progression of being able to, and capabilities and, and demonstration of impact. So coming back to this trigger, well, I'm in dialogue, say, with a person and they trigger me inside, what do I do? Well, a, a harmonic leader can, Detach. Use one of the emotional suppressive techniques. Remember, the emotional suppressive techniques are disassociation, distraction, or mood alter. Distraction is a really cool one that we can utilize at any moment in time when we're triggered, and or disassociation. Um, and that just allows ourselves to remove ourselves from the emotion, remove ourselves from the situation. Now, remember, the reason why you're getting triggered is because of the story. The story has triggered an old emotion in you. So if a couple of things. Firstly, remember the old technique, impulse gap action. Put a gap between the impulse to act and the action you take because that breath or that gap that you have might actually dissolve any need to act. Therefore, you won't react, which means the impetus behind the action is by the initiator or the person who's triggered you. You may not even respond. You may simply just see, observe, and let it go. Let it through the wicket keeper, so to speak. So putting that, using that gap is really, really important. In other words, the breath. But the breath will bring you straight back into the present moment. In the present moment, I can see I'm embroiled in a story right now. I'm not on the causal issue. Harmonic leaders deal with causal issues. So we transcend the actual story, the discussion, and we go, what's the real issue in this moment? What's truly going on? And in that moment, you might be able to see why you're actually being triggered and also what's fueling the other person. I witnessed this the other day in a workshop, a leadership workshop. Uh, of a whole bunch of about 16 different jewelry shop owners and the CEO or the, the, um, the owner of the entire shop, um, company. And I watched him in discussion. It was a beautiful open discussion, but both of them were being triggered. And they were, they were you know, in Brene Brown's terms, I suppose, they were rumbling. Um, and she was doing this beautiful job of articulating an issue, which it was calling a white elephant. And it was great, but the owner was doing another beautiful thing, which was standing there and allowing the discussion to go on and not condescending anyone, but allowing for it to happen, holding the space. The thing is, it was just going, it was a circular discussion. Why? Because they weren't seeing what was truly going on. She had been triggered 
by a feeling of powerlessness. And he had been mirrored the feeling of powerlessness because he felt he had no power whatsoever down in the store. And he doesn't because she does, because she's there. Instead, they're trying to, then they're talking system failure and everything like that. No, 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 stop. System failure, sure. There can, can be a number of systemic issues which need rectification. The true issue which is causing the heat of the discussion is the emotion underpinning the people's statement, which is the causal issue. And so when she she doesn't feel heard, when she's allowed to feel heard and the, the, the voicing has been therefore respected, and the next step is to allow her to see why she doesn't feel heard, then healing can truly go on. And exactly the same for him. I stopped and I watched this whole discussion to a point because then he stand around and said, imagine me, when you're acting in the store, imagine me standing over your shoulder. What would I think? Now, I, just, I interjected straight away. Why? Because the workshop was about empowering them. That does not empower them. That's not a harmonic leader's um, resolution. My, my point to him was, I get what you're trying to say, mate, but if you do that, you're actually acting as an authority figure. And that's not what I believe you want. Am I right? And he said, no, I don't want to be an authority figure. I just want them to know. I just want to empower them at the bottom. And I said, you already have. And you've empowered them by helping them know their principles and values. And knowing those principles and values directly align with your principles and values and the overarching jewelry store chain's principles and values. Therefore, all they need to do is act in harmony with that and they got it. So you've already done it. The reason why he kept going, attempted to keep going, was because of that unresolved causal issue. Realistically, I'm not enough. So a harmonic leader watches the situation, extracts themselves from the trigger point, and then allows the conversation to go to the next level. Now, if you can't do that, and I can completely understand that it takes practice, one of the things to do is use one of the disassociation or distraction and just flick a switch inside you. Acknowledge the rise and just keep breathing and keep focused on the conversation and ask the question, what is this person really trying to say? What is this person's real message? And it will often be what they're not saying or it will often be and will always be directly related to how they're feeling, especially about what they're not saying. So then you can sculpt questions to help them feel heard. Then after you've dealt with that situation, the conversation's come to a close, go back and deal with the trigger. Ask yourself, why did I just get triggered? What, what was triggered in me? And then you know how to do the work from there. Deal with that trigger, unplug the trigger, go right into the emotion, unplug the trigger, and move forward from there. Get the gift, get the lesson. So that's how harmonic de leaders deal with being triggered. The second thing is feedback. Now, feedback's incredibly important, especially up front when you're building your team. The feedback loop needs to be constant, constant communication and everything like that. But the issue is some people in your team have a constant craving for feedback. Why? They have an internal need for external valid validation, external validation. They continually need you to recognize them external to themselves. Now, that taxes a leader. That is thirsty behavior. That, that is energy-sucking behavior. Yeah, and I won't. I don't buy into it anymore. I actually call the white elephant. You need me to recognise you because. And as soon as I say those words, the people I work with, because of the background and the the detailed work that they've done, know it's because I have a need inside myself. Well, that's your need, not mine. So you deal with that, not me. Because remember, as a follower, what you're wanting to do is you want to empower the team and the leader as well. You want to empower everyone, and by empowering everyone, that's service leadership, you actually empower yourself. Yeah. So as a follower, I, I don't continually want my leader to give me feedback, give me feedback. In the military, we used to do this thing called negative feedback, which was I'd only respond if there was something not quite right with what was said. If everything was cool, thumbs up, there would be no response, because it's a waste of airtime. And on a radio, when you've got like 100 people on this one channel, that may need to, not all the 100 people would talk, but yeah, there's a lot of people on that channel that would talk. If there was 100 people listening, but not all of them got to speak at that time. That meant that you had to be very, very short and succinct, clear and concise about what you were saying. And it taught us different techniques like negative reporting. And so I'll often use that when I'm, uh, when I'm with the girls or you know, with my daughters and 
and with you know other people as well. Once I've given them enough of the resource being me, helping them know what my standard is, helping them understand how to achieve that standard, but also buy into that standard, make that standard theirs. And by buying into that standard, they might actually increase the standard, which means, cool, well, I can go up there as well if I choose. Yeah, so they've got it. I know they've got it. And then initially, cool, the feedback happens and the communication starts to happen. But over time, they don't need that. They can just crack on. Otherwise, it's a waste of my time and their time. And they're just trying to sap energy. So feedback initially is really crucial. Make it open, constructive, uh, and uh, and the ability to, to improve on everything. Yeah, But once that's occurred, once the person has it, feedback should stop in that sense because you've got it inside. So otherwise what happens is it's depleting the leader and it's also not helping the follow at all, yeah? So I trust that's been beneficial about being the trigger and the, uh, and the communication feedback loop. Let's see what the fight brings this week. Much love to you all, like.